Hey everybody, it's Rob from Flail Thews. This is Gundam Battle Operation 2, and this is a guest video from Seraphic Zero in the other GPO2. Uh, this is the GPO2 Beam Bazooka version, which is the uh, raid type, which you'll notice, unlike the MLRS, actually uh, actually walks. Walks a little slowly, That's, but it's still, I think, better than it was in the first game, because in the first game it was incredibly slow, except when it boosted, which made it very difficult to use. Especially since maneuver armor was not a skill that existed in the first game. If you could have gotten, you know, stun protection while boosting, which I'm certain as a raid this has, you could have done some stuff. But as it is, not so much. Oh, good damage from that. Good damage on the Vulcans, too. The Vulcans, I believe, can stun. So it's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good weapon load out here. And, of course, it has pretty good melee moves from what I've heard as well. This is my first, like, really good look at one of these, because I, uh, this is not one I've dropped myself, hoping to at some point. But, let's see, good, uh, good way to get in there. Use the, uh, Vulcans to keep them busy while he, uh, went into melee. Now, just gotta worry about the fact that he's a little bit surrounded, which, tough place to be in, but his team is there, so that should not be a problem. Okay, got the assist on the MLRS there. Uh, the MLRS GPO2 will be vulnerable against the normal type because it is, is a support, whereas the standard GPO2 is a raid. And let's see. There is a lot of GPO2 on this map of all various flavors, and that is going to be hard to deal with, especially in tight spaces, because that thing's big. But, okay. Got taken out by one of the enemy GPO2s, but... Let's see, has about a, okay, seems to be about an 18 to 20 second uh, respawn time, which is not bad. I think I've told this before, but in case you haven't heard, in the first game, the GPO-1 and GPO-2 both had respawn times that were longer than you could uh, wait to sortie. If you see, saw that forced sortie counter in the bottom right corner, it was longer than the minute it gave you to uh, before you were forced to spawn in, at which point it would just drop you in at your base on foot if you weren't paying attention and spawning someplace else on your own. It was difficult to use, uh, to say the least, but also one of the most powerful things in the game. There are 550s here. The GPO-1 and GPO-2 in the first game were 600s. And... The point, the point spread has definitely been refined and improved in this game. Uh, it was... I don't know how to describe how it was in the first one, but it was not balanced as well as this. That is a G-Line Assault Armor, which... Man, that is a lot of damage. Yeah, so it looks like the GPO-2's downswing is a lunge with the shield, followed by a Beam Saber attack, which pretty powerful, I'm assuming. Let's see, that Assault Armor is almost dead... And let's see. Oh, good dodge roll there by uh, by uh, that player, which G4 Gundam, I think? Yeah. And let's see. Now, I understand the G5 does not have a dodge roll, which is one of the difficulties you have using it. Okay, yeah, that is great melee animation. I like it. See, so, yeah, pulling back, because have to watch out for that GPO, too. Caught it with the tackle, but did not counter. And now I've got to wait for the uh, beam bazooka to recharge a little bit before uh, he can before he can fire it again. Ah, caught that uh, that GPO two in a uh, counter tackle though, and I, I love the backflip. That is that is such a great animation. And yeah, time to uh, back up a little bit. Ah, that Gerber Tetris is a good target. Not really uh, watching zero, so okay. Well, between uh, between zero and the team, they got it. Waiting for the bazooka to come back up. Yeah, he's got a, he's very low on hit points, and if one of the generals gets a good shot on him, he's probably in a lot of trouble. But he does have that big shield. It is hard to hit him. Beams. Ooh, 4,300. That probably was an MLRS he just hit. Got the assist, because someone else got the kill. And yeah, I'm pretty sure if the GPO-2 doesn't have forced injectors, I'll be amazed. Because it, it with that many boosters, it should be able to change uh, direction and stop on a dime, basically, so. And, let's see. Oh, wow. I'm amazed that, that attack got through, but it did, and cut with a good counter, and got the enemy before he got killed, and, oh, wow. Managed to uh, catch the Gerbera behind it. That's amazing, too, but I think this is going to be it. Yep. 
No? Ah, caught the shield, but that was it. Yeah, the shield, I'm not sure how many hit points it has. I think it's somewhere around 20 grand. Not 100% certain on that, but it's a strong shield. And let's see, about three minutes left. It's a very close and high uh, stakes round because, again, unlimited, so 550 point mobile suits left and right. And they're doing fairly well. Oh, wow, good catch up there. That must have been like two kills in a row to make that much of a difference. Either that or a lot of assists. Let's see, that is... Ah, that's the uh, G-Line Assault Armor. It's only 450, but it has gotten. Maintaining a slim lead here. I mean, basically, you've seen what the point and assist values are like. A 38-point a, a lead is not a lot. Let's see, that uh, beam bazooka shot missed, but... Let's see, I'm... It seems to charge fairly quickly, too. Mm, what, about 8 seconds? Maybe 10? Okay, 10. For some reason, I thought it had, uh, it didn't take quite that long. But, ooh, missed somebody's uh, shot. I think that was the G4 firing its, uh, its uh, Mega Beam Rifle. Which, really good thing that, uh, that that missed him. Because as a raid with that thing doing tremendous damage as a general... It, with good aim, that might have been able to uh, kill Zero or ju or get really close, because that that mega that mega launcher is not to be uh, underestimated, especially since that is almost undoubtedly a level two G four in a room like this. See, good shot there. Looks like it's stunned. There's an, uh, there's support fire pinned on that GPO two, so at the moment. Best thing to do is keep it still. That's not quite going to work, but... Ah, good. That was a good move. He boosted in, got them to stay in the support fire. I think it caught the G-Line Assault at least a little, but it definitely uh, definitely did some good damage to that other GPO, too. Let's see, I think the Assault just lost its shield, so... Good time to be using Vulcans. Man, those Vulcans fire quickly, too. That's amazing. 2,600 damage, a little bit of collision there between uh, allies, as happens very frequently in this. Yeah, that's, you know, don't, you know, don't neglect the sorry tell if, uh, when you're, you know, playing with people you don't have a mic with, like a lot of uh, Zero's team presumably does here. Don't neglect the sorry tell when you knock each other over. It's, it's polite. It's, it's good manners. And you're not always going to see good manners in this game, but it's, you know, it's worth not adding to people's frustration if you can help it. I wonder if that beam bazooka has piercing, because it seems like it went right through a couple of allies and managed to uh, hit the enemies there. Ooh, smart move. Team sp uh, enemy team spawned in en masse, so they only have a little bit of time left, but they're going to try to make the most of it. I don't think they're going to make it. No, not in the least. They would have had to do some serious damage there to make up 4,000 points in that little time. I'm not saying it was impossible, just extremely unlikely. But, okay, yeah, great work by Zero, over 100,000 damage, 1,200 points of assists. He was the most targeted at 22% of uh, uh, the time the enemy team was looking at him, which I'm pretty sure is what diversions mean. So, yeah, that that went really well. And thank you much, Zero, for, uh, for the video. It is appreciated. And that is going to do it for today's Gundam Battle Operation 2. We will be back soon with more, so until next time, everybody take care and have fun. Later! Back in Battle Operation 1, there was a class of equipment called Pilot Medals. They were basically given out for specific achievements, uh, healing a or repairing X number of uh, hit points on mobile suits, playing this many matches, winning this many matches, getting praised this many times, whatever. And one of the things that those medals could do was decrease respawn time, which means that they were pretty highly sought after, especially once the GPs were out. Because the other thing about the GPs in the first game is they had no equip slots. So whatever they were when they came in is pretty much what you could get out of them. Which was still a lot, honestly.